everybody. Welcome to this episode, the Valentine episode, the official Valentine episode for Father Knows. This is Valentine week. I have no idea if our our theme is going to reflect <laughs> Valentine's Day in any way, shape, or form, but the uh, the week started off, or the weekend, with Super Bowl. And as you see... I, I have, it ended with that, yeah. It ended with it as well. As you see, my cup is... Uh, representative of next year, guys. Next year. The Vikings. We're Viking fans. and Are you, Jerry? I am a Viking fan. I Even though I'm, you know, I'm, I, I was born in the time of the Rams in L.A., and the Rams are back, I'm still a Viking fan. They got me. Um, I watch. And tonight I actually kind of wanted the... Uh, 49ers. The 49ers. I really wanted that young... You know, yeah, it felt a little scripted. I'm gonna say, I don't know what that means. Scripted, like a book, yeah, like a play, like it was fake, really. You know, just didn't feel right. You mean it was predetermined, you know. Some people will can't say prove that. it, can't prove it, can't prove it's against conspiracy. it. Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not buying into this one at all, <laughs> you know, not, not in the least. And I'll I buy it, and I'll buy into any conspiracy, but not this one. I don't know. We'll see. So this week's episode is not Valentine's Day themed. We didn't want to date ourselves, but happy Valentine's Day if you're listening <laughs> to this on it. Mm -hmm. But the theme is finagling a solution. Finagling or finagling? Finagle. Finagle. Is it like, you know, like that other thing, you know, you say potato, I say potato. You say Might ruin, be, uh... I say rune. And you know? what about the roof? Bark, bark. I say roof. Roof. Yeah. Rough roof. Aunt, aunt. Interesting. There's a lot of those words out there. We should make a collection and have and and uh, come up with a game for it. Yeah. Do you say borrow or do you say lend? I don't know. Who I, or whom? I, I just say, I don't want to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me out of it. Exactly. So in that, you'd uh, finagle, finagle, finagle a, situ uh, a solution. Well, let's go see what you got. Okay, let's do it. You say finagle, I say finagle. Oh, Justin's starting us off today. Oh, I say potato, you say potato. Yeah. I want to move back home for the summer after this semester of school is over so I can work and save money for school next year. I'm not sure how my parents will react to this because my dad cut me off financially. Some background. My parents have a large hobby farm, so when I moved away for college, I got depressed because I didn't have any animal friends. I talked to my therapist, and she recommended I adopt a pet to help with my homesickness. So I adopted my cat, and I've been doing much better mentally. When my dad found out that I adopted her, he went ballistic and ended up cutting me off financially. For a cat. He's okay with me bringing her home for breaks when I come visit, but I'm worried that if I tell them I can't afford to live in the dorms this summer, he will try to make me surrender the cat. That's not an option. What should I do? How should I approach this? Do you have any other ideas on how I can stay here instead of going home? The only thing that really comes to mind right, right off the bat is get a job there. Find a job nearby that you can be on your own, you be self-supporting, and he can't control you. That's the first thing. I mean, it, I, I, I don't understand why a father would have a fit, but you know, I'm not, we all think differently. We all have our own, you know, good word, Mishigas. <laughs> we all have our own shtick. Everyone's so, a little quirky. Yeah. So the, to, to go finagle your way back into your dad's house with the cat, I think the right answer is don't even attempt it. Just go out, look for a job and you will now have your option. If your dad says you're going to come home, you'll say, you know, dad, I'd love to come home for the, for, but I do have my cat. And I know because of the, um, the response I got, you know, from you when I got the cat, I wasn't dare going to try to put you into a, a situation where you had to, you know, be upset with me to come home and bring the cat. So I got a job. Yeah. What do you guys think? Um, For me, I would not mention money being a thing at all. I'd say, hey, like, I'd love to come home for the summer. 
are you guys okay with me moving home for the summer? Obviously, I, I'm bringing my cat, but you guys won't contribute anything towards her. You know, I'll be, I'll be working this summer. I'll be, you know, blah, 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 whatever you're going to do to make money while you save. So you're ready for school next year. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell them, oh, I'm moving home to save money. Say you're moving home because you miss them. Mm -hmm. You want to live at home for the summer. There you go. They're able to bring their cat when they go home for breaks. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, what's a couple extra weeks or a couple months? Mm -hmm. Like, as long as he's not paying for the cat, how you much? Know? How much is a cat, Morgan? It is probably, I mean, vet bills unexpectedly could come up, but food wise, I don't know, fifty bucks a month for a cat, maybe a hundred if you're going real crazy on fresh cat food, maybe four hundred. I don't know. The the bottom line is it's probably not about the cat. It's mm -hmm. probably about control in some way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, moving home does help a lot. Staying in dorms is expensive. So I would just kind of white lie this one to get your solution here. Well, try it. But I, I would also certainly have a backup plan by looking for a job in town, something you can do there, because it 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 might offer you a whole different uh, path in your life that you'll meet people, you'll have different experiences and, and it might give you a great foundation. So either way, I think that, uh, look into the job, see what you find. And then, you know, certainly tell your parents that just in case, you know, I'm going to, I'd love to come home and, and hang out with you guys for the, you know, for the summer. What do you think? So when you say get a job though, you mean by the school. You don't mean get a job back home, right? Just I, I was saying get a by job. By the school. Yeah. To and, still and stay in stay, the dorm housing. Yeah. And find find your environment there. I mean, there is, I mean, you you may find a job there. You may, you know, find some other friends it, it, in the event that it doesn't work. Yeah. I, I know in the summertime, dorms are cheap because people go to the dorms when they travel to go visit family the they they sometimes stay in the dorms it and they're cheap. Depends. It depends on the school. Some of them, like my university, shut down their dorms for the summer. Mm -hmm. So I think it depends on the school. But I know, you know, obviously there's a lot of other off campus housing, apartments mm -hmm. or houses that people leave for the summer and try to sublet. Mm -hmm. So that might be a cheaper option. Um I sublet sure. I sublet from a friend of mine and I literally paid $300 a month. Like it was because he didn't, it was either he pays and doesn't live there mm -hmm. or like I take a little bit of the burden off. So there's, there's options like that too. I, I don't understand the comes home for breaks and it's cool, but absolutely a problem if you move there. Cause it sounds like it should be with the response, it should be all or nothing. Yeah. But it's like, oh, it's fine on breaks, but. I just think of those videos of dads on TikTok where someone brings home a puppy yes. and the dad is anti-animal, anti-puppy, any of that. This guy right here. And, I, then, <laughs> and then they're there for a little bit and the next clips oh are my God, all- Oh my God, they're besties. The dad cannot be separated from the dog and yeah. they are best, best friends. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have a daughter. I don't know if any of you guys know this. I have a daughter- that, you know, brings animals home and then says bye. When was the last <laughs> time I brought an animal home? Seven, uh, nine years ago. What animal was it? Holly. Holly is 16 years old. Right. I didn't bring Holly. You brought Holly here. She didn't, you knew ha, you ha, were getting ha, stuck Holly, with Holly. <laughs> Holly didn't come in on a truck. or uh, Wait, Holly didn't get here in an Uber. <laughs> no, but you knew. So back in Minnesota, we had three dogs in Minnesota, two Yorkies and a German Shepherd. Holly started to get really, really, really aggressive with the German Shepherd, constantly provoking him and attacking him. And it got to the point where the German Shepherd was just trying to like keep her away. And so he like, would defend himself, but Holly was a terror, terror An animal, to him. Just vicious. She was really bad. So it was either we had to, like, one of the dogs had to move or do something. So Holly came and lived in California. But you knew you were getting Holly. Holly was coming for a visit. No, come on. Don't play dumb. I've seen that side of Holly firsthand. Yeah. yeah. Holly, I felt the effects of that. Holly attacked Justin. <laughs> She's Holly, vicious. When I first met her, Holly bit me and I bit her back. 
I yeah, did. He did. I did. He did. No joke. And no, that, I know. And that's and that's just a funny. And it stopped it from that point forward. She was affected by Matthew. Matthew was was mean to her. No, Matt wasn't even mean to her. She barked at him in the driveway, and he like threw a baseball glove up in the air, and it happened to hit her, and just she was a nut. Holly's a nut, clearly. That's why you don't go to backyard breeders. But Holly, you end up with but Holly dogs. is our Holly now. And yes, I did go to love Holly. Yeah, but don't act like I bring all these animals home when it's been nine years. You will. You're threatened now to bring more home, and I'm. Uh, you will when me and Justin get a dog and we have to travel. You'll be the first one I call to babysit. Really? Yeah, but it's not your dog. Do I get paid? Sure. A lot. I mean, the going rate. What do you guys think I, that, that dad should get for taking care of her German Shepherd when she gets it? We're talking, you know, work here. <laughs> Chime, it's not that chime hard. Chime in, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right, let's go on to story number two. I, 25 female, have been with my husband, 30 male, for seven years, married for six. In those seven years, we've had someone living with us for all of six months. I am the oldest of five kids and have had three out of four siblings live with us at various points for various reasons. Most recently, my mom has been living with us and since has moved her husband in, my stepdad, with little to no conversation. Over the summer, my husband had to go to training for the Air Force out of state for three months. My mom, who I truly believe had the most sincere intentions, moved 3,000 miles to help me with my son who is now 18 months old. Now, this is where I may have fucked up. I didn't set the appropriate boundaries from the beginning. I want to be clear. I never asked her to come. I fully appreciated it, but I never asked her to move. She moved her entire life without much of a conversation. For weeks, boxes were showing up at my door and being stacked up in my garage. I had just lost my dad three months prior so I wasn't in a great place mentally. Piling on my husband being gone for a long period of time and essentially being a single mom, I was doing my best just to keep my head above water. My mom was in an immense help for the three months my husband was gone, but my husband has been home for four months, and in that time, my stepdad has also moved in, and again, there was no conversation. He is a trucker in North Dakota and got hurt on the job, and with no permanent residence, my mom told him to drive down and stay at the house and have been here since before Thanksgiving now. In that time, I have constantly felt like a guest in my own home. I go to stores and walk around aimlessly just so I don't have to be home with my stepdad. He's a great guy, but he is constantly making comments like, quote, do you think you should do some laundry? Maybe you should vacuum the living room. Things like that. Just kind of condescending and a little misogynistic. I think for the sake of my relationship with my mom, that's taken years to repair from my childhood, I think they need to move out. I just don't know the best way to go about it without damaging the relationship. Ideal outcome, keeping the relationship with my mom as healthy and intact as possible while doing what's best with my nuclear family. Additional info, my son was a 29-week preemie, so I needed to quit my job in order to take care of him and take him to countless appointments upon discharge. This is my mom's fourth marriage. First didn't last very long. Second was my dad, 20 years. Third stepdad that left me with lots of trauma and a very, very strained relationship with my mom. She's been married to my current stepdad for one year. Well, the first thing that, before anything, is when I, somebody would say to me, do you think, I, you think you should vacuum or you think you should clean? I would look at him, especially since he's not paying rent or anything. Yep. I would say, are your legs broken? <laughs> <laughs> Can you walk? Time to time to chirp them back a you little. You have no problem using my toilet, so maybe you yep. want to use my vacuum. <laughs> yep. You know, you could be a help. You're here. Now, that aside, let's now move into reality. Yes, you need to go to your mom and say, Mom, I love you, but this is not the lifestyle that I'm really looking for. You and Dave, if that's her husband's name or whatever his name is, fill in the blank. You know, I'm glad we we, we had some time together, but now it's time that you guys got to get your own place. And that's it. Pull the bandy off quick. Make it, make it a defined line. And that's what you do. 
Yeah, Justin, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I think you need to do this pretty quickly. Rapidly. <laughs> because <laughs> because it, that vacuum may be breaking. <laughs> it well, it's just gonna get it's gonna get beyond repair very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. And I I've I've been in situations where you maybe outgrow your you know, your time with someone, whether it's on a longer trip or whether it's on a study abroad or whether it's in a living situation. There's definitely times where a relationship will be healthier if you do not cohabitate. Mm-hmm. You know, you're at that time. You, It's just, you helped her out and now it's, mom, time to go get your own place. And it's not because I'm being, you know, I'm not trying to bully you out of here. I'm just, I think it'll be best for us going forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's taking a toll on me. I also wonder how much you need to share. Like, I wonder if there's a way you can Jedi mind trick and truly just make it about you where it's, I really appreciate your help. I've really enjoyed having you. But now that, you know, my husband's back and the the little right. one's doing good, yeah. I'd, l- I'd love to just have some time with just our little family and really get in a good routine. You know, I'm just, I'm kind of curious what your plan is. Like, do you think we should start looking for places for you to rent in the area? Did you plan on going back to North Dakota? You know, what are your thoughts? Right. And make it like very just positive. Like, so happy. Thank you so much. Just a little Jedi mind trick. No negative. If she doesn't take the hint, then you can start being like, no, no, no. Like, I think we truly just need some space to really be our own family unit. And they should cook fish that night. Just anything to get them out. But (laughs) I I just wonder, like, and maybe we've had listeners who have been in this situation and will have like a really great, sweet way to say it. Yeah. But I feel like you could just Jedi mind trick your way out of this where it's like, oh, my God, thank you. Thank you. Because if you've already had a strained relationship with someone no matter how nice you maybe say it yeah when you set a boundary and like hey you and dave need to go it could just not get recipro- received well yeah, true so i would I'd jedi mind trick i just i also like directness and honesty you can be direct but it's all positive right yeah. i appreciate you coming i have loved having you but me and my husband we need we need our own personal space and some time to really be a couple yeah. We've had so many people living with us and we just would really love some some of our own space. You're direct. But it's not, hey, your husband sucks. He's making comments about me vacuuming. <laughs> he's got to go. I can't deal with it. It's Mom, just, you can say, but he's going to stay in the yeah, tent out in the yeah. backyard. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you try to keep it so positive because I think sometimes too, like parents can be very- Water trip. Very Watch it. quick to have their feelings hurt. Watch even it. Even if you have good intentions. So your next word could be your last. I know. <laughs> I know. See, this is why you Jedi mind trick. You just you just, you know, compliment sandwich. You know, I like honesty is another way. I'll give you a wonderful example tonight and then we'll move on to number four. Mm. Uh you know I have a good friend, Julie. Yeah. Julie called me tonight and I've been helping Julie with her some of her construction needs at her place with her contractor. And uh, she said, I'm coming into town tonight. Tomorrow I got these things to do and I got to meet with the contractor at nine o'clock. And, and I figured, okay, maybe she wants me to go with her. I don't know. So I go, fine, I'll, I'll pick you up at 8.30. And she says, no, no, you don't understand. I want to meet with him by myself. No. Oh, and I said, that's, that's not going to go well. <laughs> I said, okay, that's fine. And, and, I, and I, was, I was not hurt. No. I did, as far as I looked at it, it was relief. Yeah. And I said, great. I said, whenever, whenever you need me, after that, if you meet, you want to go somewhere, you need me to take you somewhere, just give me a call. Give me about 30 minutes ahead of time that you think you'll be done so I can make sure that I'm there for you on time. Yeah. And it's okay. Be direct. If you, if you want someone to join you, say, I want you to join me. If you don't, say, you know, don't misunderstand this, but I need to do this on my own. Yeah. And there you, it, well, it should be fine. I think if, it'll be good. If you're dealing with people that have any kind of maturity and not any other shit going on in their head, you think it, you might be just fine. Let's yeah. let's always assume people have some crazy shit going on in their head, though. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, I don't know really? if anyone, I'm speaking from personal experience. I don't have a lot of sane people in my life. So I'm going to assume everyone else, you know. I I'm, assume you're talking about me. I'm though. full heartedly talking about you. <laughs> Especially the ones in this room. Oh my God, the ones in this room are the worst. No, but everyone's got screws loose. You just got to got to know how to navigate them. You know, it's really? like Plunko. Just boom, boom, boom off the different screws. I'm taking applications for new daughters because <laughs> apparently I'm, <laughs> this one's yeah. got a problem with me. No, but moving along, I am going to take a quick pause for my sciatica to stretch because holy smokes, and am then I we're, struggling? I thought you were going to say for your bowels. Why are the prince's headphones off? Because I was, we're taking a break. Oh. One of this week's partners is Earth Breeze. One of my resolutions this year and just going forward is loud budgeting. I want to spend less money, make choices that are better for the planet, better for my health, all the above, which is why I'm so excited to share Earth Breeze. These eco sheets are changing the game. Unlike liquid, powder, or capsule detergent, Earth Breeze looks like a dryer sheet, but it's actually ultra concentrated detergent. And it is beyond easy. Just throw a sheet in with your laundry and watch it dissolve in any wash cycle. There's no measuring, there's no mess. And best of all, there's no wasteful plastic jug. And my favorite part, Earth Breeze is dermatologist tested, hypoallergenic, and free of bleach and dyes. And I did fragrance free. I have really sensitive skin and laundry detergent was giving me rashes. Do you want dye or fragrance on your skin all day every day? No. Earth Breeze, baby! And if you get Earth Breeze, end up not liking it, that is okay. You just let them know and you will get a full refund. No questions asked. Right now, our listeners can get started with Earth Breeze and save 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash FKS. That's earthbreeze.com slash FKS for 40% off your subscription. Number three. Number three. See how I did it? Look. See. Yeah, good job. One, two, three. Yeah. I'm not sure how to see eye to eye with my fiance on parenting our son. My fiance and I have a two-year-old son that has definitely been hitting his terrible twos stage. We both didn't have very good upbringings. I grew up in a mentally and verbally abusive household, and he grew up in a physically and mentally abusive household. One thing I've taken from my childhood is I never want to cause my child the pain that we went through. I get along with my parents now, but I will never take parenting advice from them. My fiance, on the other hand, will take parenting advice from his mom. Due to his culture, he has no problem with what his mom did to him growing up and worships the ground she walks on. I know that it's his personal choice, so that's not where I have the problem. They will constantly criticize me together on how I let our son walk all over me and that I baby him too much. I have done an extensive amount of research on parenting due to not having good role models as parents. This is all very new to me, but I want to do it the best that I can. I just never want my child to be scared of me the way I was of my parents. There's a fine line between gaining respect and scaring them. My fiance, on the other hand, has not looked into parenting as much as I have. He acts off of pure emotion and low patience. If our son starts crying about something, he'll yell at him and put him in a timeout and threaten to spank him. When I try to talk him down in those situations, he will shut me down immediately and will even yell at me. There's been times where my son has wanted me during a tantrum and my fiancé will literally block me from being able to pick him up. He won't even try to understand my research and point of view. It's all too sensitive for him. He will even embarrass me in public if I'm not punishing him good enough by verbally criticizing me and even laughing at me. I'm just really not sure what to do. Ideal outcome to try to find a better way to communicate about parenting methods and to get him to see my perspective. Additional info, my fiance does have PTSD from when we were in the military, so that's where some of the low patience and anger comes from. He has been mentally abusive to me as well. I'm going to be sarcastic for the moment. I was brought up this way, and I'm fine. Ever Anyone ever heard that? Clearly not fine. Okay. Clearly not fine. Yeah. You know, my dad, I'm, I'm, I'm off the sarcasm now. Okay. Back, okay. back, back into reality. Okay. My father came out of World War II. 
And my father was definitely affected by the war, by the army, by that lifestyle, and being under George S. Patton, who apparently liked to yell. Um, you know, my dad was a yeller, and I decided when I became of age, I'm not going to have that in my life. I'm not going to be a yeller. And best I best that I can recognize, there are times that there is some, you know, easy yelling in the house from room to room. Dad, can you get me this? Or Morgan, can you get me that? Yeah, but that's not like yelling, right. yelling. It's, I know that. Yeah. And but yelling to me is is a trigger. My first thought as I was hearing this is you guys need counseling right off the bat because babies don't come with a book that says this is how you do it. But because there's so much of uh, of culture of, or, or raising effect, uh, effectiveness going on here, the way that you were affected growing up in your home, the way he was affected, and all those wires that are connected that way in your subconscious, you you guys really do need to decide together how you want to conduct your life going forward and maybe going to family counseling to have some of this, you know, this discussion, how to rear your child, how to get away from those bad habits and do some work on it. This is the first time we've ever had this kind of conversation that I opened up with this type of, of a solution. So I certainly feel this for you. It is a, it, it's imperative. It's a non-negotiable thing that you guys really need to do together. And it's not going to get better if you don't. Mm -mm. And you may really want to think how you want to live your life and what's healthy for you emotionally. As much as you may love this man and he's your baby daddy, I would really consider this. I mean, life is long. If it starts and it's having troubles now and it, no one's going to do any work to try to change it, I don't think 10 years is going to be much better and 15 years down the road and when your child finally grows up and they're out of the house and you're looking at each other and there's so much anger and hostility and muck because of what's gone on for the past 20 years. And I'm giving you kind of a, of a fortune tell version of what I've, what I can see. And I only go on experience, you know, from living life. I'm 66 years old and I've been through a lot of this stuff and that's what I'm sharing with you. So I hope that you'll think about this. I'm sure people, you know, will have comments, Morgan and Justin will have their thoughts and I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> Justin. I feel like in, in business, you hear the term non-starter a lot where it's like, this isn't even a, dis a discussion. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to things that take collaboration like this, mm -hmm. where it's both of you acting as a team to accomplish a task, whether it be parenting or anything in a relationship, I don't think there ever should be a non-starter. I think everything should be negotiable. I think you should be able to talk to your partner about anything. Mm -hmm. And though they may not change, I still think it. you should be able to talk and go back and forth, at least in a, in a perfect world, seeing the other person's point of view, making them feel heard, you know, trying to articulate without being a brick wall. And I think some of the hardest problems in relationships are when you have a disagreement and you're dealing with a brick wall where, nope, I'm just, I'm, this is how it is and that's it, mm -hmm. which is fine when you're setting boundaries and things, but for something that takes so much collaboration like this, I, I think you need to be able to talk. And I think a you know, going to therapy is probably the first step to improving that. Otherwise, I see this kind of my way or the highway extending in many different scenarios beyond parenting. Well, and what do you think of the behavior she's been dealing with? It's verging on a territory where you start to question the relationship. Because if you can't solve this with therapy, then are we happier as co-parents? And will our child grow up in a better environment? as a sep to you know sep a broken home but a happy broken home versus a sad tumultuous abusive together home yeah i mean here's what's hard for me and if i was the mother in this i would have a hard time trusting my child with someone who behaves this way that's true 
This is a two-year-old. The two-year-old is crying and he's threatening to spank him and put him in a timeout. A two-year-old doesn't know what a fucking timeout is. Yeah. They are two. You're trying to spank a two-year-old. You're berating your partner in a store because your partner isn't punishing them enough or as you should. All I hear here is a partner that is incapable of being a partner. Like, I'm so frustrated by this because it's like you have her who is going above and beyond to not repeat the cycle that she went through, to break that generational abuse, that generational whatever trauma. And she's seeing it again. And she's seeing it again with her partner who refuses to adapt, who refuses to just have a little bit open-mindedness. And the mom, him letting his mom chime in? No. The only two people whose opinions matter are yours and his, the parents. And if he is going to have an opinion that is unsafe or unhealthy for your child, then his opinion doesn't fucking matter either. This is not healthy. And you even say it in your additional info. He has been mentally abusive to me as well. Yeah. And you have to get to the point of, is this worth it? Like you said. And I think, you know, it's hard because we have learned recently that if you're in an abusive relationship, going to therapy is actually not the greatest because the abuser can learn techniques from therapy to then abuse further and worse. It's this whole thing. So this is a really, it's a fine line of like, How do you address this? And I think individual therapy for you would be great if you feel that your relationship is safe enough to do couples therapy. I think that would be great. But you really need to get aligned on the page of we are doing things differently. Your mom is not parenting our child and really got to set that boundary because, I mean, you are going above and beyond trying to heal and make sure you have a healthy, happy kid. And you have people that are directly sabotaging you. And they're too. Like this is the age where they're they're testing boundaries and they're trying to make sure the relationship with their caregivers is solid. This is where the insecure versus secure attachments happen. Like it's it's crucial that Pivotal. this yeah, absolutely. It's crucial that this gets addressed. Absolutely. This this is the formative time where all your subconscious radar starts getting put into place. Mm -hmm. And if this isn't done with, with the most healthiest of environments, you, you may be inviting yourself for a lifetime of struggle. So, So take, take the time. Even if he doesn't go for counseling, you go for counseling because you may just need the strength to, you know, to be able to say, you know, I know this is wrong and I got to make a move. He's got to partner with you. And I do know one thing that our subconscious is so uh, astute that it sometimes puts us in the environment of what we grew up in without even realizing what we're doing. We look for the wrong people sometimes. So this is a time that you take with him and together try to go down, try to go down this, this path where it will be one of health and happiness for you guys and you can grow because with him losing his shit, that's just telling me he's not mature and he he can't handle it. Well, and he does have PTSD as well mm-hmm. from their service that's in the military. Right. I started with that. And so it's one of those things where if he's not putting in work to do individual therapy, mm-hmm. he really should. I mean, Absolutely. I know there's services for military um, and veterans and things like that. So Especially with PS with, with post traumatic right now PTSD. Yeah, and it's it can be challenging. I know you know some VA benefits aren't. It, it can be a process of advocating for yourself, um, but this is something I would really, really try to get on top of because you want a partner. You want you know you fell in love with this person for a reason, and it's it's addressable. I do agree. Another one of this week's partners is Hungry Root. I have a sensitive stomach and I've turned into a pretty particular eater, which is why I love Hungry Root. They make getting high quality groceries simple and easy, and they come with amazing healthy recipes that I don't have to put work into planning. 
and I can still stick to what I like and what I'm trying to achieve. Hunger Root has so many different dietary needs you can check off as you're doing your quiz. So if you're dairy-free, soy-free, peanut-free, shellfish-free, or you're maybe trying to have high protein, less sugar, anti-inflammatory, immune boosting, these are all choices you can make, and it makes it so Hunger Root can send options to your door that accommodate those needs. You don't have to worry about getting stuck with options you're not going to like. Hunger Root makes their recs based on your quiz, but each order is fully customizable. So for me, I had a sausage recommended. Not my style. Removed it, picked a new option, literally 10 seconds. I love that Hungry Root has breakfast and snack options, so no matter what meal, I'm taken care of. So if you're ready to try for yourself, right now, Hungry Root is offering Father Knows Something listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash FKS to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash FKS. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Thank you. Four. 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 Okay, here we go. I hope this is an appropriate question. I hope so, too. As I don't know who else I could ask. I don't know either. I, 29 male, am staring down 30, and I've never had any kind of relationship or even kissed another person in a romantic way. In high school, I was a small, nerdy guy with no lack of friends, but I just never ended up dating anyone. I really don't think anyone was interested, but I wasn't very interested at the time. My parents also would say things about us not being allowed to date in high school, so I just focused on my studies. When college came around, I was working and commuting to a fully residential campus, so I never really experienced the college experience. I had some friends, and some of whom I'd go to dinner or movies with one-on-one, but nothing romantic ever happened. One of these friends mentioned offhand after months that we were dating, which was a complete surprise to me. She was leaving at the end of the semester, so we had the conversation and decided not to continue to pursue it. No idea how I missed that I was in a relationship. After college, I spent a lot of time working on myself and figuring out who I am as a person, which left me in an awkward spot. I am an adult man trying to date while having zero dating experience. How do I go about approaching that subject with a possible partner? Is it even something I should bring up? With the age I am and the age range of women I'm dating, I just want to value their time and not put the responsibility on them to teach me how to act. Ideal outcome, I value honesty really highly, and my ideal outcome would be to have a plan on how to approach this conversation with a prospective partner. Okay. I feel you. And the reality is you're actually in a good place. Mm -hmm. You may not realize it. But the one thing that you have going for you is you understand that friendship is more important than physicality. And I'm not going to put down physicality for a second. Don't misunderstand that. And I think that as you are finding people that you are spending time with and you are developing feelings for, and maybe that's where we're, where, where you're getting off track is you do, you're developing the feelings, but for whatever reason, maybe you're, 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 you're hiding them or you're, um, you're, you're pushing them down. There's a word I'm looking for, suppressing them, that you might be suppressing some of them. I think that you can certainly, once you realize that you like them, in the beginning, you can even, as you become friends with them, you can say, you know something, this is, I like the time we're spending and I'm glad we're building our friendship and I'm going to see where it's going to take us. You be, Because you date someone that is, somebody that you can kiss, it doesn't mean you have to kiss them. It means you wait to the moment that you have that bond or you have that feeling that it's there and not be afraid to take, to, to, to enjoy it. But yes, you can certainly say to them, this is new for me. Uh, you watch the movie Hitch. Hitch really, <laughs> Hitch hit it. You know, when you move in to kiss somebody, you also allow them to have the ability of coming to you. And then you know if it's something that's part of both you that you both want. Mm -hmm. Hitch is a great movie. Honestly, I would watch that. I think Hitch really nailed it. Albert Brenneman. That's right. Yeah. So I am sure a lot of people here will have comments on this one, but I think you're in a great place. And the fact that you haven't, you know, let your, just your instincts or what, you know, get you down the wrong path 
you're you'll you'll actually meet somebody at this point in time because really when you get in a relationship, most of it's timing. And you're at that time, you're feeling it, you understand you'd like to have something like that. And as you meet these people and you talk with them and you you do decide you want to spend time with them and you guys connect emotionally, when you go in for the kiss, follow Hitch's advice. 90-10 is what it was. Mm -hmm. You go 90 and let them come the other 10. But I, I really agree. I think being 29, it's a great age. Like people are very serious with their intentions at 29 mm -hmm. with dating and knowing who you are. People spend their whole 20s trying to figure that out. So you know who you are. You know what you want. As far as getting dating experience, you're only going to get it by doing. So it's time to put yourself out there, as scary as it might be. Get on the apps. Go to places like coffee shops or a library or maybe a bar, like whatever fits your vibe, your style, and put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Make friends. Talk to people. But I would set a goal where it's like, I don't know, something like I'm going to go on two dates this month. And I don't think. Well, I, he's spending time with people. I mean, he's friends. He's but, going out with them. But never transpired in anything serious. And even because, when it did. Because he, he was said, afraid or because he no, didn't feel it. I'm not sure. But I think it was said like even when I did spend time with someone one on one, she said I was her boyfriend and like. I didn't even really realize. You didn't get the memo. Miss the memo. <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like, maybe it goes above your head, but like now you're intentionally dating. You're going to put yourself out there. You're going to go on these dates. You're going to find out, you know, what kind of people you're into. I think as far as disclosing your lack of experience, mm -hmm. I don't think you really need to until, you know, you start getting more serious with someone third, fourth, fifth date, whatever that feels like. And people kind of talk about past relationships. Then you can be like, you know, I've, you know, I've had some friends. I, you know, dated someone casually, but I've never really had anything serious. That's not lying. That's being truthful. But, you know, it's, he can even say he, I focused on myself on and, school and he could on even working and he can go even go. I've never even been so serious with someone that I've kissed him. He could say that. Uh, it depends on what you're comfortable with. That's right. I, like, I personally don't think that's necessary. And if, like that, if that's something that feels true to you, you can. It's a big deal to him, though. Maybe. Maybe. I don't. It might be like because you're nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, you're nervous to get that experience. But I don't think you necessarily need to disclose like I've never kissed anyone before kissing someone for the first time. It's just, okay. I don't I don't think like you need to like preface I, that. Feel it out. Go the 90%. Let them come the 10. Watch Hitch. Yeah, it's it's a, Hitch is a good one. But I, I would just feel it out. But you have to start putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. So two dates a month, you know, get on the apps. And make sure that you're doing, you know, activities and things that you yes, like. exactly. Where you can meet people doing those activities. And if you, if you don't have those activities... Open them. your mind up and say, gee, do I want to go take, you know, a dance, a salsa dancing class? Or do I want to go do, you know, join a, uh, a paddle boarding club? I mean, so many options. There, there are things that are out there that you can go out and get out of, get out of your box, get out of your own way and try new things, whatever yes. they might be. And typically you'll meet people that want to That's the talk. best way to do it. What are your thoughts down there? I feel like the only disadvantage you have that you should just recognize within is the fact that you don't have the experience of past relationships to have a strong radar. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to pick up red flags of things you've experienced before and led to the demise of the relationship um, or anything of that sort, which is also kind of exciting and fun at the same time because you're going into a dating pool of people that have been through the bullshit and don't want any more bullshit, which is kind of nice because when we're all dating, when we're young, you go through the shit. I mean, you get cheated on, you get broken up with. You, it's a dumpster fire out you there. You just deal with so many inadequate partners <laughs> and people and you, you, you get that. I mean, it's not, not to say you won't experience heartbreak, but it'll just be, it'll be different. And I do think at some point, 
once you're really having a connection with someone and things are tending to get more serious, it it would be good to disclose your lack of dating experience because that's just you telling them who you are. It's not like you're going to hide who you are. Oh, I'm going to pretend to be something I'm not. It's like nobody wants that, especially at this age. A lot of people are dating to marry or at least to have something serious. Mm -hmm. So I think be the true authentic self you are fully, but wait for the right time. And yeah, I think that will come once you what I think have that connection and someone's art. You've kind of already set the hook. You know, it's like the connection's there and you feel like you can open up and start being more personal. That's kind of the right timing. And there may be a time to disclose your lack of physical experience as well, because there are people, especially once you're close, that would love to be a teacher. It's true. I've seen some, it in a no, lot of shows some, and relationships and really, movies. Yeah. There's people that yeah. like to be the teacher. No, and I, I do agree. Like, don't hide who you are, but I don't think it's necessary to, like, go on your first date and just, like, drop. First sentence. Yeah. Yeah, like, hi, I'm Tom. I've never been kissed. I, you know, I've, <laughs> I've never had a that. serious relationship. No, 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 right. no, no. Let these people get to know you. Mm -hmm. See if you even like them. And then, you know, at the end of the night, if you want to try kissing someone, you can try. Or, you know, a couple dates in, you're feeling it. You can say, hey, you know, I, I haven't had the most dating experience. I really focused on school and myself. And, you know, I'm, I'm new to all this. I have a question. If I may ask. Yeah. So she said that, you know, we've been dating. And you, you thought to yourself, I didn't get the memo. Mm -hmm. Was there any moment that, she, you know, she was expecting you to kiss her that you may not have, you may have missed that, you know, that, that vibe or you may have missed the message. And she just kind of said, you know, I'm tired of giving him the hint. He's just not getting it. <laughs> so, you know, reflect back on those moments as well and see if you missed the memo. So you understand yourself what the memo might look like. Yeah. I had trouble with the confidence to make the moves you back did? in the day. Yeah. I I still do. I had people very confused. Are we friends? Are we something more? I I mean, even me. I did not know Justin. No, but that was fully the game plan. That wasn't that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't a lack of confidence. I knew what I was doing by the time I came to LA. But Yeah. <laughs> any, but like it like even for me and Justin, it was not clear to me. He might have had an idea in his head, but I thought he just wanted to be friends. So But I had to do that. That's a that's the people know the story. But besides that, I yeah, think they know the story. They know. But if you're ever having trouble with making that first move, because it is kind of weird when you get to the end of date two and they're just, you know, waiting for their their ride to get there or whatever, or about to go to the car or whatever it is. And there's that moment and you know, it's that moment. Even if you've never been in it, you know, it's the moment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would let that moment go. And then the whole rest of the night after I'd be like, that was it. That yeah. was when it was. And so sometimes if you realize you're ending up there and it's hard for you to go in the moment, you can get to a couple dates in. And if you're feeling it, you can just say, I'd really like to kiss you. I and, was gonna and then say, if you, you say ask. it and you break the ice, you'd be surprised then how just it just just comes naturally. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say you can definitely ask. And I feel like in today's age of like making consent very clear. I think it is like hot for a lot of people at the end of the yeah. date, you know, you get walked out or to your car or whatever. And like, just asking like, wow, like I've had a really good time tonight. Can I kiss you? Yep. Like so many people will love that. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you get the, the yes, it's like the kiss is 10 times easier. It takes all the pressure off, but it all evaporates, but follow Hitch's rule. 90 10. 90 10. Yeah. Oh, you still do that for sure. Yeah. But because, then you just ask. It's like and here's clear. The, even what's then, happening. it becomes more of a 50 50. Wait wait, wait, wait. Here's the best part she could be giving him his first and only last first date kiss. First and only last first. It's a lot of like. The first. Yeah. 
be pretty impactive. Yeah, that's a twister. Uh, but if any of you <laughs> listeners out there have any red flags, because I wanted to mention it when you were like, the only thing that might be a downfall Thanks, is yeah. like not having dating experience. Like if there's any listeners out there that have like solid red flags that are like kind of across the board to look out for, put them in the comments. If you have any tells when someone's into you, put them in the comments. Um, I think this would be a good one to come together for and, and maybe if help you want, out. And maybe you might want to help them by describing what the first kiss should involve. Not too much tongue, no teeth. Easy, soft lips. You know? It's okay, everybody. We can, it, it's, this is, this is a Valentine's gift. They're finding love. That's true. We got there one way or another. We finagled it. We finagled. <laughs> Finagled. Finagled. You say finagle. Finagle. I say finagle. Enough of my singing at number this table. Five. <laughs> let's go to number. Let's go to number five. 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 Okay. So, hi. I've been listening to THT and FKS forever. Love you guys. I'm writing in because I am having some career struggles. I have great parents, but my dad has been really tough on me during this hard time. So I'm hoping for some fatherly advice from Jerry. And I know Morgan has talked about working lots of different odd jobs and her struggles to find an OT job. So hoping you guys can help. I'm a 23-year-old female, graduated as a nurse in June of 2023. I've been in healthcare for six years at this point, my past four years in nursing school and working tech jobs. I got my first RN job in August, and I was thrilled. This was my absolute dream job and dream specialty, and I was absolutely thriving and doing great at my job. I had some hiccups with my health issues, and I ended up calling out one day due to a fever. Since I was still in the 90-day probationary period, I was fired, even though I was excelling clinically. It has been a few months now, and I am applying to hospitals nonstop, but still haven't found an RN job. My dad has been very harsh on me, implying this is all my fault. To spare some details, I believe my manager was out to fire me because he found out about my health issues. While trying to get a new job in a hospital, I've been working at a coffee shop and walking dogs. I'm just really struggling to find purpose during this depressing time for me. I feel like everything I worked so hard for was just ripped out from underneath me. Side note, I do see a therapist and psychiatrist regularly, I guess I am just looking for some fatherly advice and encouragement, since I feel like I can't really go to him right now, or when I do, it worsens my mental health. You are telling me, Miss Morgan, that if you are in the healthcare industry, you're a nurse, and you get a fever, and you call in sick, and you're in the first 90 days, you can get fired Legitimately? There are some hospitals, you know, nursing's really tough right now because there is a shortage, but some, you know, you get a bad charge or you get a bad supervisor and you're within those 90 days probationary period, that's like a safe zone for them to get rid of you for any reason. So if- This is not wrongful termination? No, not if you're within the probationary period. And- By the sounds of it, our writer might have some chronic health issues that might impact their work or might require accommodations, which is legal. That is absolutely okay. But if their supervisor found out about that, that could impact their, their, you know, reliability. It could make it, you know, more expensive for the hospital. Like we're paying someone who's not here because whatever. Ah, oh, their probationary period. Bye. I mean, it's it's absolutely not right, but they did it. You have an infection, which causes a a, a fever. You don't go. To, you call in sick, and that's not wrongful termination. You know, this is the weird way it Without worked. Cause. It, it. You didn't show up for your your thing. I don't know. I, I my hospital would have been okay with it. I was, you know, I was sick, but clearly the supervisor had it out for our writer. So regardless of what happened, it's irrelevant at this point. How do we go forward? There's so many things wrong with it, but it's, it it is what it is. And you might be able to get a lawyer to take it on pro bono, but 
All right. Who moving, knows? Moving on. Yeah. So all you really can do is is ignore everybody else and keep your you know keep it to the ground and go start pounding the pavement looking for another job. Get a hold of some of the placement placement services that are looking for nurses. I do know that uh, they're out there. Yeah. And I know that there, there's a lot of people that don't have nurses in small communities. They have what's called traveling nurses. And they do very well because of the inconvenience of having to travel. And it's broken up. And it's not just here. They move you all over the place. So I would look into staying with your profession because obviously you like it. You've been doing it. I mean, there's such a demand for it. And, you know, there, there's not enough stuff with your health to know how to, to talk about that. So I only can really answer the thing when, when someone kicks you down, you pick yourself, you, you pick, you bring your big girl pants back on and you, you go out and you start looking for another job at another place that will appreciate you because nobody wants to be somewhere where you're not appreciated. Mm -hmm. You only want to go to a place that you're really loved and really they, they get you and it's a good mix. Yeah. So look forward, don't look, don't look back and that's the answer. And far as your dad's negativity, you're just going to have to just look at that as being in your brain, blah, 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 because it's not being positive. It's not constructive and it's not helping you. It just mm -hmm. brings you down and, it, and it, it demoralizes you. And nobody wants to demor Nobody wants to be demoralized. No. So just hear blah, 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 blah. Walk away and do what you got to do start searching for a different position. Mm -hmm. I feel like I watched someone go through this. Oh, well, I did. And um, I don't know, like I see in the additional, she has a supportive boyfriend. So I feel like I was kind of in that role and she also feels like she doesn't want to dump it all on him all the time. But, you know, I think for you internally, just think about, you know, I, I saw Morgan hit this a few times where she's like, well, what's the point of doing another application and another and another interview and another this and just getting nothing. But the reality is, I think in many different careers, whether it's healthcare, whether it's music, no matter what it is, the longer you stay in the game and are able to keep trying and keep trying, the moment always seems to happen. The moment always seems to come. And it's just, you know, whether you're doing one app every couple of days, every every day, you don't know which one of those you send in will be the, the ticket. And then once you get that, you're off and rolling again. And then the, the sky's the limit. And you do figure out the groove. Yeah, but the thing is, you're already, you've already gotten yourself extra jobs. You're keeping yourself afloat. Yeah. Like you're a hustler and you're motivated and you're determined. So I think just try and, and lean into that as much as you can because you have it within you. I can see it in the right end. Yeah. You're grinding. So you just never know when that next thing is, but I didn't live it. You did. Yeah. I think I look at this and I, I think your, your resume might be psyching a lot of hiring managers out you know, you graduated school, you passed your NCLEX, which is huge. Then you got your dream job. And unfortunately, you had an asshole that was a gatekeeper and let you go during, you know, your probationary period. People who are taking your resume now are going to see new grad went to a hospital for less than 90 days. What happened here? That's not, you know, such a a confidence booster in hiring you. So unfortunately, you might be applying for these hospital jobs where they're seeing your resume now as, ah, it's a little bit of a red flag. Let's interview this person with two years of experience instead. So my advice, get back into nursing. It might not be a hospital. It might be a skilled nursing facility. It might be travel nursing. It might be a home health nurse making house calls but get back into nursing. Don't let this resume gap, you know, extend further. And while you need to keep your bills paid with job walking in a coffee shop, do that for now, but start applying to other nursing jobs that you might not have considered to get nursing back on your resume. And once you have more experience or even um, on your resume, something that says active, 
and it's active, not only, you know, 60 days, you're going to be more appealing to these hiring managers. But until then, you're kind of a red flag right now in terms of hireability. And I think you just got to get your foot back in the door. And that's, I mean, that's what I had to do. I I applied at hospitals and places I did not want to apply at. I took out my license for home health OT because I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do and I couldn't get a job in a hospital. So, I mean, I went without a job for almost a year and I should have, you know, gotten into home health sooner, but with licensing and COVID and how it worked, like yeah. the soonest I could is when I did. But you got to maybe expand a little bit on what you're willing to take on. And you remember one thing that when people are hiring you to be a nurse, they want you to walk in the door and feel comfortable that you know exactly what to do to start, you know, to start applying your skills. So you need to, to show them that, you, that you've been working because that's, yeah. that in itself is going to show them that you know, the, the experience that you're going to pick up at, at four or five different places, however many that you're going to be hopscotching around till you really find your final home, you're going to be learning things. You're going to be getting yeah. experience because remember they say medicine is practice. It, it is. It, it is It is not something that you just learn and you're done because you've learned it. It's practice. You learn a lot in the books, but damn, do you learn more in person, hands on. And literally, I just have a horror story about like an EVD drain and I remember like I was never EVD never came up and I'm doing like neuro at uh, Palm Springs. And one of the nurses was like, oh, yep, they're good. They're ready to go. You know, feel free to get them up. And we go in the room and I'm like, "Okay, you know, like, let's get moving. And my supervisor at the time was like, whoa, 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 whoa. They got an EVD. And they're like, if you would have got them up, you would have that would have been terrible. And I was like, the nurse told me. Nurses are supposed to do EVDs, but this nurse let the therapist clamp them, what which is, is against regulations and policies, but it was crazy. So EVD, always make sure your nurse, you, clamps it before therapy gets a move in. But um, I was going to say, I have a cousin who is in nursing, made the move to Utah. She thought she was going to go into nursing and be able to, you know, as a new grad pick, her hours and work in this cushy clinic nine to five. She couldn't get that job. So she took a job, loves it, but she's working nights. And mm-hmm. so it wasn't her first choice, but you know, she's, she's working now she's and a, loving it. She's getting experience. Getting experience, yeah. which is the biggest thing as a new grad is getting experience. Love it. Yeah. Well, that's it for this week's show. And we are really glad that you tuned in and, We want to continue to grow and build. So please make sure that you press the subscribe button if you haven't already done it. And we do let you know that we have our Patreon coming up. We're going to end this show, but we're going to go right into Patreon. So join us there. And one of the things that you do get with Patreon is we do have our once a month group session. Group T, baby. And we all, I mean, it's really great. We have a family that's really kind of growing with that. Yeah, it's it's become really... I mean, I feel like the last one, there was, what, like 35-ish people on? And I remember even Sam was like, oh, when I first started, I was the only one on. Yeah. And Sam literally was. She was like, I'm in Denver, and I just moved. And then it was literally the three of us. We have- four, Well, four of us. What's really great is we do have people that are from all over the world. Oh, my gosh. We got Canadians. We got people in the UK. Yeah. Australia. Australia sometimes with the time We had difference. someone from, I think it was Croatia. So join us on that as well. So we'll see you next week and or we'll see you in what Justin calls the backyard. That's what you call it, Jer. Is that what I call it? Yeah. Can't even remember what that. What are we grilling tonight? <laughs> uh, we're going to grill uh, hot takes. <laughs> no. Goodbye. <laughs>